So we're jumping back in to Richard Morgan Casey's evidence to the Post Office for Eyes and IT inquiry and he's being questioned by core participants at the end at the moment and he refuses on no less than three occasions to admit that a miscarriage of justice has taken place in the case of Lee Castleton. Not that he should have known it necessarily at the time, although that is obviously a potential possibility that hasn't been explored, but that knowing what he knows now, knowing what is available now, knowing the judgment following on from Lee Castleton's case, knowing the evidence that has been given to the post office inquiry, knowing the documents that have been disclosed now, does he now reflect that there has been a miscarriage of justice? And he refuses to accept that point. Additionally, in regards with to disclosure, his answer to the fact that it is put to him that disclosure was a dismal failure in this case, he turns around and insists that he had no involvement in disclosure decisions, despite evidence showing that his instructing solicitors, at least, were involved in such decisions. Let's jump into the inquiry. Now, the position is that disclosure in this case was a dismal failure. That must be obvious now. I can't help you. I did not take part, nor was I instructed, on the disclosure exercise. But No, but based on what you know now, you can probably either conclude that you thought it was absolutely flawless or a dismal failure or somewhere along that spectrum, surely. When the trial is ongoing, uh, and you must forgive my ignorance, but in the criminal courts, when the trial begins, counsel is sole arbiter of disclosure. Uh, is that not the same in the civil courts? No. No. I see. But the position is, you would agree, uh, an ex improviso revelation by a witness and also for the very first time logs referred to by a witness, uh, hardly satisfactory. No, and that's, that's why they were disclosed. Right. The known error logs were not disclosed, though. I don't know. Well, there's a reference to a Kell in the attachment to Mr Dunks's statement, uh, and Mr Dunks was a witness in the case. Perhaps the attachment... I don't suggest that you deliberately uh, fail to disclose it, but... Uh, you, read, you must have read Mr Dunks's statement and the attachments there too. I must have. Yes. Uh, and maybe Kel wasn't explained, but it means known error log. Fine. So again, something else which would have supported Lee Castleton's case, that there were issues with the integrity of Horizon. Maybe they were also worried that that would overwhelm him too. Presumably Mr Castleton's solicitors would have read the same witness statement. Well, we don't and, know... And would have been capable of writing a letter had they thought it appropriate to do so. By this time, of course, Mr Castleton is a litigant in person. He became a litigant in person on the 20th of November, didn't he? Yeah. And witness statements were exchanged substantially before then. Interesting, though, that the strategy was uh, let's pull forward the trial date to December if we can and... Uh, thrust 15 witness statements in his hand, you know, feels like the case was almost run to be overwhelming, except where there was evidence where it could potentially support his defence, in which case it was deemed we don't want to overwhelm. It seems a bit of a contradiction all across the board, to be honest. Mr Morgan, who has the obligation to make a disclosure of a known error log? The post Does office. The post office. So, please, without trying to shift the onus onto either Mr Castleton himself or his former solicitors, Messrs Rowe and Cohen, it was clearly and obviously the post offices and those they instructed their duty to disclose that information, wasn't it? If it fell within the terms of standard disclosure, then yes, it did. Yes. How did this happen, do you think? And these are my final questions. How did, how did this happen, do you think? Are you surely, by now, knowing everything you know, Mr Morgan, regard the decision in the Post Office Limited and Castleton as a miserable miscarriage of justice? I 
I don't know. I don't know that it's a miscarriage of justice. I'm not here to express a view on the rights and wrongs. Counsel instructed in a case is not there to express a view on the rights and wrongs. I was asked to prove a case that I did on the basis of documents signed by Mr Castleton, whose truth were not challenged by Mr Castleton. Mr Morgan, you know that... I'm not sure I could be counsel on the basis of that. I mean, if that's what helps you sleep at night, but, you know, I'm not there to make judgments. And if that sends innocent people to prison because I can play this game better than a lay person defending themselves, I'm just not so sure that would sit within my moral and ethical framework, but each to their own. That the learned judge, in the course of his ruling, his judgment, which you then wrote an advice note on the 22nd of January 2007 um, for the benefit of those who instructed you. He found, paragraph 23 of the judgment, there is no evidence whatsoever of any problem with the system. And at paragraph 11, he stated that it was inescapable that the Horizon system was working properly in all material respects. Knowing what we know now, I ask you again, no disclosure of the known error logs, no disclosure of remote access, no disclosure of the receipts and payments mismatch bug. Do you not now reflect that the decision of His Honour Judge Havery Queen's Council was a dreadful miscarriage of justice? I think you have to read the judgment in its entirety and see that he based his assessment on documents signed by Mr Castleton as an agent recording a debt due to the post office. And there was no difference between the amount that was shown in the document signed by Mr Castleton and the amounts shown on the horizon log. Now, of course, if Mr Castleton signed false accounting documents, then I would accept that there was that the error um, Oh, sorry, that the judgment is wrong. Is he making a subsequent allegation there of false accounting? I don't know. Well, that is precisely what Mr Beer was trying to explore and successfully, if I may say so, explore with you. Miss Morgan, I, I ask you for a third time. It it it's, is this not, again, the astigmatism, the bias that arises in this process, which is not meant to be adversarial, I assure you, but just knowing what we know now about the Fraser judgments, the common issues judgment about the oppressive nature of the contract upon which you relied, the Horizon IT judgment, which went through a litany of non-disclosure, other misfeasance and bugs, errors and defects, I ask you for the third time, and I won't ask it again, do you not reflect now, knowing what we know, that the decision of Mr Justice Havery, the decision of His Honour Judge Havery, Queen's Counsel, was a dreadful miscarriage of justice? I think that the decision of Mr Justice, or His Honour Judge Havery, was the correct judgment given when Mr Castleton did not say, my figures were untrue. Had he said my figures were untrue, then we would not be in this position. Isn't that precisely what he was saying at trial? And what he was saying during the opening, that the figures weren't true? Pardon, Mr Henry? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you. 